Hello everybody, I'm Mufi Hammond. Welcome again to Think Tech Hawaii, another edition of Tourism 101, where we talk about issues affecting our number one industry in the state, tourism. Today we're going to focus on a district, iconic, historic, uh, and everyone has a favorite story about Chinatown, because through the years it's been a gathering place for many reasons, cultural reasons, religious reasons, commerce, all kinds of activities that take place in Chinatown. But with this progress and development has also come a series of challenges. I want to have two individuals speak specifically to what they're doing to make Chinatown a better place to live, work, and play. One of them is Sean Hamamoto, who is the executive director of the Neighborhood Board Commission. He's done a bang-up job there uh, in reaching all the different neighborhood boards, uh, soliciting their participation and involvement. Uh, and the mayor has recently appointed him to be the liaison uh, for the Chinatown community with the administration. Uh, Sean is a graduate of Punahou School uh, and also has a college degree. Uh, he went to school on the mainland, came back home and finished up here, uh, and has had years of experience working in government. Uh, he was a former uh, senior aide to Council Member Rod Tam, uh, and in the present administration, he heads the Neighborhood Board Commission. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Not to be outdone is a Kamehameha School Kapa'alama High School graduate, <laughs> Captain Mike Lambert. Uh, Captain Lambert uh, got his degree in business administration from UH West Oahu, and he's had a meteoric rise in the department from officer, sergeant, major, and now captain. And he's really recently been appointed to head up a new unit uh, within HPD called the Community Outreach Unit, and a lot of it has to do in Chinatown. Thank you for being on the show, Captain Lambert. Sir. Yeah. So let's start with you, Captain. Uh, you know, let's talk about some of the law enforcement challenges uh, that have uh, been part of uh, the challenge of ensuring that Chinatown uh, is a safe place uh, for all of us. Yeah, so the, it's always been a challenge, particularly in Chinatown, where it's always where do we find the balance between enforcement and outreach. So, for, you know, prior to Chief Ballard coming aboard, um, there was only a very small pilot to kind of improve the way that we deal with social service related issues regarding the homeless, the mentally ill, uh, those are substance abuse. And in a lot of cases, you know, they have all three uh, type of issues and really trying to explore different avenues besides incarceration, which is expensive and doesn't always have the type of results that we're looking for when we're dealing with our homeless. So it's really trying to explore and find other ways to perhaps better use taxpayer dollars and be a little more responsible and seeing the big picture and not just being so quick to put everybody in jail. What about the crime rate in Chinatown? What is, is it, uh, you know, oftentimes there's this competition between Waikiki and Chinatown. The folks in Waikiki say, hey, we need more HPD officers in Waikiki. And Chinatown folks will say, no, 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 we need them more in Chinatown. Can you address some of those uh, challenges there? Yeah, so um, definitely, you know, Waikiki always tends to be given um, the mindset that it's always given more resources and actually there's equal amount of resources in both areas. It's just that Chinatown, um, unfortunately, due to the prevalence of the homeless crisis that we're experiencing and the focus of it, it appears to be less safe than Waikiki. Um, we do have a lot more, um, I guess, incidences that are highlighted within the Chinatown area, which can create fear within the community and create, um, you know, perhaps, perhaps a feeling that the police aren't doing enough. But between Waikiki and Chinatown, very similar incidences occur, and it just comes down to, again, um, you know, again, how the news plays it and, and how people with the community takes it. So, Sean, uh, you know, as, a, as someone who oversees the neighborhood board there, what are some of the issues that have come up in the Chinatown Neighborhood Board? So, um, you know, definitely um, congruent to what Officer Lambert has said, homelessness uh, over the years has become more prevalent. Um, you know, I guess on a few decades ago, it was more the open drug dealing. You know, that was a big thing. But, and as Officer Lambert had said, before homeless wasn't such a big issue, but now it is. Um, so, yes, it is important because it not only affects the residents of the area, but the many small businesses and our tourism industry as well. Yeah. So, um, I know when I was mayor, you know, and every mayor had a, a 
pet event or favorite event, I should say, in Chinatown. And certainly um, it was always impressed upon me, and I recognized it quickly that, you know, you can't keep your eye off the ball. You can't take Chinatown for district, uh, Chinatown district for granted. Uh, talk about some of the challenges, the ongoing challenges that the city has in terms of doing the maintenance work in Chinatown or the cleanup uh, that uh, uh, people, whether at the neighborhood boards, when the letters to there talk about, you know, why isn't this being done? Why isn't that being done? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, so yeah, um, sanitation has been an ongoing issue. And uh, of course, this is in conjunction with the homeless. Um, you know, way back when I, the city used to have better resources, I believe Mayor Harris uh, back then had a clean team where they could regularly uh, power wash streets and so forth. But what had happened over the years is the areas of responsibility grew. Um, so more people wanted more and more service, but what happened is the resources either stayed the same or shrank, because I know like some of their equipment got stolen. So bottom line is um, the resources were unfortunately spread thin. Um, I think this is when the community uh, steps up. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, neighborhood security watches. There are uh, volunteers in the community that have been willing to step up to take part and, you know, either doing citizen watches with HVD or even volunteering to, you know, help with the cleanups. So it is a true community effort. Captain, can you talk about the community outreach unit? They say it's newly created. Uh, can you talk about why it was put together? And uh, I know why they put you there, because uh, you're a creative guy, and you love going out in the community. But talk about what, what that uh, entails. So what the community outreach unit is, it's a group of officers that really have a big heart. Um, sometimes we've been referred to as outreach workers with, with firearms. and. Uh, Kind of funny, you know, we're still police officers. I want everybody to remember that. But definitely we have brought in the way that we look at problems and the way that we attack um, issues that affect the community. So one of the biggest things we want to do is support diversion programs. Diversion programs meaning that instead of being so quick to put somebody in jail, we try to put them into mental health services. We try to put them into substance abuse treatment programs because the data shows that there's a lot better results for individuals that are put into uh, services rather than jail. A lot of times they come out worse than they were when they went in and it's kind of a revolving door. So we really want to try to leverage um, our community partners, which we have a lot of great, great community partners that support our initiative. They take our phone calls and we encounter individuals that could use mental health services or substance abuse or the simplest of housing services. Um, and they go ahead and they take those phone calls for us. And again, instead of having to leverage jail, um, we go ahead and divert them to services. We're going to drill down a little more on that because of some new initiatives uh, as a result of some funding. Uh, that uh, the Hawaii Tourism Authority and the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association got together with the state to provide. Before we do that, Sean, I want to come back to you. And I want to talk about, uh, you know, Chinatown is often seen from some folks who come here, well, that's just Chinatown and that's just for the Chinese community. But there are other ethnic groups that gravitate to Chinatown. Talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. And you're correct, Mayor. Um, if you look back historically at Chinatown, it was the entry point where all nationalities came through. Um, for example, my great-grandfather, when he first came to Oahu, the first place he lived was on River Street in Chinatown. So yes, although called Chinatown, it is a place for all um, nationalities. And you know, I, I remember when I was on the council, I, I got uh, to work with, uh, uh, to bring about, help bring about the Arts and Marks Garage. And I'm happy to see that it's continuing uh, to function uh, and flourish, but uh, the arts has always been a big part of Chinatown that brings people from all ethnic groups and all ages. Yes, uh, the arts has been a has been a growing part, and actually, they have been uh, one of the key groups that have, I guess, try to get this reimaging to Chinatown. Um, over a decade ago, I think you remember First Fridays uh, started as an initiative. This was a community uh, project. That was meant to, I guess, give Chinatown a different image. The idea was to bring people down, and the idea was when you bring positive elements into a community, you automatically displace the more, uh, I guess, criminal activities. And to a large extent, they were successful. Um, first Fridays of every month, um, you would have professionals, families come down to actually enjoy and walk around. And I can say Chinatown has definitely improved. We still have a ways to go, but you know, working that arts community was um, a big catalyst in improving the community. I love the fact that Hawaii Theater continues to have a rebirth, uh, where you know, when I was growing up. That's where we went to the the movies. <laughs> <laughs> Cost thirty five cents back then, wow. uh, and uh, 
you know, now with the concert that they're having, the events that they're having there, it's starting to draw people back to, to Chinatown. Absolutely. Um, Hawaii Theater is uh, for sure one of the uh, anchors in the community. They've been not only providing great, you know, entertainments and uh, venues uh, for people to enjoy, but I can also say about Hawaii Theater that they are active in participating mm -hmm. with the community. They engage. In fact, I want to uh, commend them. Um, for a while, they were holding their uh, business public safety meetings, and Hawaii Theater would offer up their space to have meetings. So, so they've been great partners in the community. So um, do we have, uh, when we talk about some of the not so nice things that happened in Chinatown, before it, it used to be concern about drugs and gambling and, and gangs. But I haven't seen as much, uh, at least in the public media, uh, about that. So obviously something has changed in that regard. Or, or am I get, having a wrong impression? No, um, you're absolutely correct. Uh, you know, again, when I, was a, when I started off my career, I actually started in Chinatown, and the issues back then were prostitution and gambling. And that's, you know, it, all day, all night, people would come into the sub and go ahead and report that type of uh, uh, illegal activity. And now it's just, it's almost, you know, pure homeless complaints, you know, somebody blocking the, the sidewalk, urination defecation. Um, and I can definitely see where as a community member, if I lived or worked in that area, I'd be very frustrated uh, with the current state um, of affairs there. But again, like, like everyone is saying, is that we gotta move in, a, in the positive direction and it's not gonna be overnight. Everybody has to realize that a direction has to be made by the city, by the police, and then we have to follow through with that regardless of what people, uh, with the kind of criticism we get for it. So, you know, uh, Mayor Caldwell has been great. Chief Ballard has been great and supported. Um, my really my ass uh, for a lot of things that um, to to benefit not only Chinatown but all of Honolulu. Chinatown has always been the focal point because of saturation. So we do start off a lot of our pilots in Chinatown, um, and then we try to get again best practices which we can utilize throughout the whole island. Uh, having a very visible presence in Chinatown, because I remember when we were debating, you know, having a, a physical presence there, which is now you know you have actually substation there. Correct. The same argument in, in Waikiki, you know, to me it's always been a major deterrent to crime when folks know uh, that, you know, there's a police presence, right? not just officers patrolling, but there's, there's actually a station that you can go to or seek help immediately. It has to have helped. Right, so having a substation in the area definitely gives an officer a place to kind of um, launch from and work from. Um, the issues with the visibility is just that we're dealing with a shortage right now. So for beats that would normally be filled, they go unfilled. And not because the officers don't want to work. We just don't have that type of employment numbers that we've had uh, years prior. Um, Chief Ballard has assigned some um, uh, pretty smart majors to work on that. And we are slowly but surely filling the ranks again so that we can start to see more uh, staff, and not only in Chinatown, but in all neighborhoods. But I can tell you right now that Chinatown definitely needs the support. Um, there's a lot of focus there. And initiatives like uh, you guys are supporting definitely helps that process move along. Our guests uh, today are Captain Mike Lambert and Sean Hamamoto, two individuals who are at the forefront uh, in their efforts to make Chinatown a better place to live, work, and raise our families. And it goes without saying, I think every mayor uh, has regarded Chinatown as a special district. Uh, but the challenges change uh, throughout the years. And now, in the second part of our show, we're going to focus on homelessness, uh, which has really become a major issue in Chinatown, as it has throughout the rest of Oahu. There's some creative solutions, and there's some individuals and organizations that have come together uh, to make sure that we address this head on. Uh, so we're going to take a little pause for the cause, a little break here, and then we'll be back with more from Think Tech Hawaii, Tourism 101, where our focus today is on Chinatown. Hi, guys. I'm your host, Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World. I'm, I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m., and this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier, and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you. And uh, aloha. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to join us on Wednesdays at one o'clock for Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000 year odyssey where we take a look at cannabis as food, cannabis as medicine, cannabis and religion, and cannabis and dear old Uncle Sam. So please join us to 
learn all about cannabis. Again, Wednesdays at 1 o'clock. Thank you. Welcome again, everyone, to Think Tech Hawaii. Today we're talking about Chinatown here on Tourism 101. Our guests are John Hamamoto, the Executive Director of the Neighborhood Board Commission, and Captain Mike Lambert. John, um, the Neighborhood Board is one forum for people to come forward, share their manao, share their concerns, complain. Uh, what are some of the other organizations that you work with uh, as the liaison of the mayor in the Chinatown area? Thank you, Mayor. And, and you know, that is the exact reason why um, the mayor assigned me to this, is for the fact that there are so many different groups. Um, so in addition to the neighborhood board, you have fantastic organizations like the uh, Chinatown Improvement District, the Chinatown Business and Community Association, CBCA. You have the Arts District Experience, and you have the Chinese Chamber of Commerce, United Chinese Society. And uh, one good thing is while they all have their own interests, they do share a uh, I guess a common thought of doing what's good for the community. But you know, because there's so many and so scattered, it really does take someone to be a liaison and to kind of uh, help, um, I guess, shepherd these discussions to be constructive. You know, I know when I was mayor, uh, there's always uh, those figures that have been involved in the community for a long time that everybody kind of looks to. Nothing can come through Chinatown without their permission. You know, it was my day was. Sunny Wong, yes. Hin Chu Lao. Mm -hmm. uh, are there Sunny Wongs and Hin Chu Laos today in uh, Chinatown? Well, I can say Sunny Wong and Hin Chu Lao uh, are still very well known and remembered in Chinatown. They're legendary. Uh, but you know, today uh, we still have a group of leaders, still from the old days. Uh, I think you may be familiar with the honorary mayor of Chinatown, Dr. Joe Young. Yes. Uh, he's around all the time. Then you have other great leaders, uh, Chu Lan Chu Kwok, president of CBCA, Lee Stack, president of the CID. You have uh, Sandy Pohl with her arts group, and you have Nicole Reed with her restaurants and Hotel Street, all great people. Uh, friends of Chinatown, uh, our friends on Cape Kalike Mall. Uh, there's just so many great people in the community. Yeah. You know, the, the thing, though, I as always know is whenever I would meet with them, you always had to have a meal in Chinatown. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got a favorite Chin Chinese restaurant or two that you want to share with us? Oh I know gosh. you got to be politically correct, <laughs> but, you know, when, you, when you're owner for Chinese food. You know. I want to be honest to say I've never had a bad meal in Chinatown. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can tell you was a government answer. job. <laughs> Good answer. But, but, I, but I will say I did thoroughly enjoy the meal we had together at, at Golden Palace, where I believe you tried the chicken feet. Yes, <laughs> I did. <laughs> but you know, and Chinatown is just a wonderful place, and I think, and that's why it's so attractive for tourists because of its uh, authenticity and its history. Yeah. Captain, I want to come back to you. We we have a, an annual conference called the Visitor Public Safety Conference every year where we as a, a tourism industry come together uh, and we sit down with HPD and all the law enforcement stakeholders and business owners and the community and try to identify the hot button issues. And we kind of say, look, we're in it together. Let's work together and collaborate on this. And so in our uh, conference uh, that we had this earlier this year, uh, Captain Ballard came and Deputy Chief McCarthy, they always participate. And she said in no uncertain terms, the number one issue for HPD is homelessness. And she appealed to us uh, to help and assist. And obviously, we were all ears. And she talked in particular about uh, a certain model uh, that came from the city of Seattle, mm -hmm. the, the LEAD program. Uh, and um, uh, we got together. And as you all know, uh, we were able to find some matching funds from the state in which we awarded some dollars to the Hawaii Harm and Health Reduction Center, uh, led by Heather Lusk, and we gave them a $90,000 grant uh, to go forward in this mission in collaborating with HPD. We also gave $15,000 to the Chinatown Improvement District uh, for their uh, citizen patrol program. That being said, I want to acknowledge and credit Hawaii Tourism Authority, the Statum. Uh, I want to acknowledge the legislature uh, and Governor Ige, or proving these matching funds uh, that we were able to parlay into uh, giving uh, these two worthy organizations that are very integral to the, what you do uh, in Chinatown. Well, can you uh, drill down on that initiative that uh, really seems to be making a difference and they have a creative guy like you implementing it? Right, so uh, um, yeah, LEAD is uh, Law, Law Enforcement Assisted Diversion. It was brought by Heather Lusk and her organization, who she, she sits over the LEAD Hui for Hawaii. So, 
Um, of, the, of the many creative things I've done, uh, that I did not create. I do participate in anything that's a great idea. So when I was invited to hear about their great idea, I, I, I just had to go ahead and support it. You know, the, the data is there to back it, that the version does work. And again, you know, it's not going to be for everybody, but for a subset of the population, it can definitely make an impact and improve the community. Because for every one person that's diverted out of the jail system, out of that revolving door, and gets help for mental health or substance abuse, that's one less individual that we can count as homeless. Um, and again, particularly in the Chinatown area. So they've, the lead initiative, um, we do support diversion, as, and it's one of the definitely one of the definitely the one of the main diversion programs that we're looking at um, to move forward. It's always the devil's in the details and trying to iron out a, a memorandum of agreement into how that process would work. But we're definitely interested in supporting it and making sure that when we do encounter individuals that could benefit from a program. Um, that Heather and her team have put together or brought here to Honolulu that we go ahead and send in that direction and set it to jail just to be released in the morning and back out on the street. Now, I was impressed with the statistics that Heather provided to us to demonstrate uh, why this would be a good uh, contribution to make uh, to them of $90,000. But what I really find uh, very refreshing, it kind of helps uh, negate a stereotypical image of how HPD uh, is involved with the homeless situation. You, know, you usually talk about them, them helping to you know, move the homeless out of the parks or in illegal areas, or people talk about, yeah, they get cited again in life. But this one here is really a different approach, because as you say, it's all about diversion. Correct, so we definitely wanna be, how can I say, um, more dynamic in the way that we approach it, right? It's very easy and it's very um, impersonal to just give someone a ticket and walk away. It's very impersonal to just arrest someone, drop them off in jail. What it does take is somebody to ask somebody, why are you out here? Why it keeps you out here? And is there a possibility of me diverting you to a service rather than jail? So um, we definitely want to have a softer approach because we realize the data, and again, everything goes on to data. The data shows that you can have a positive effect on someone without having to arrest them, and it's something that Chief Ballard has supported. So w walk us through how, how it happens. So you, you come across a, a homeless individual, and, and what, what are the kind of things that you're looking at to say to yourself, you know what, this person could be a good candidate for this diversion program? Right, so again, we're all in discussions on how the actual process, but some of the ideas that have come out is that an officer encounters someone, say, perhaps for a park closure, um, if the officer is the complainant, meaning a member of the public has not called on that individual, it's solely on the officer, we can have the option to divert them to services rather than take them to jail. That person um, would have to be screened. So a lot of the big things we want the community to understand is that we're not taking, you know, robbers and, and you know, murderers and giving them a break. It's for that person that basically has done nothing else wrong in their life except for be poor. Um, or, have, or have some type of other issue that keeps them on the street. So we screen them. If they don't have any violent history, they are eligible for lead. If you've had robberies and you, you know, you're just victimizing the community, you're not eligible for that diversion. You go to, you go to jail as you should. Um, but it really what we want to do is, there's a lot of people, a lot of great people that I've met out there that are just down on their luck. Um, maybe truth, uh, a few bad choices of their own, they're now in the predicament they're in. But I do believe that everyone is salvageable. Um, some people need a lot more effort than others, but everyone as a human being can improve and change. And that's what we want to do as a police department is give people that opportunity to improve. Now, how many of you are involved in this effort uh, that you lead this special unit? This so um, there's uh, me and I have uh, five under my command and um, it's a big hearted group. A lot of them actually have experienced um, homelessness as a child. Um, so they really have the heart mm -hmm. for it. Everyone thinks as police officers that we come from this perfect world and mm -hmm. we get slapped on a badge and every night we beam up to the mothership to our perfect world. We don't. We, we take off our uniforms, we go back to our homes. We have a history within those communities that, that they all are complaining about and, and upset about. And we have the same frustrations, but we just have to be, uh, maintain our integrity and be fair in how we're, how we're administering help. How has this been received in the Chinatown community, what, what Heather and her organization has done in partnering with HPD? Very well, you know, I can just say in talking with the community members, they're overjoyed. Um, that day that the gift was presented by HTA and HLTA, there were just so many smiles and there was just a sense of optimism that, yes, things are going to get better. But it's exactly this, it's what it takes. It's not just government, it's not just community, it's community, government, and the private sector working together. Can you talk about the Chinatown Improvement District and, and the good job that they've done, Lee Stack? Yeah, so Lee Stack has been in the community uh, for for many years. Uh, she is one of the um, landowners in there. I've, I can't even count how many meetings, community meetings I've been with Leo 
over the years, but she is always in the community. Almost every other time I'm in Chinatown, I will see her or her brother just walking around. And, you know, she's always willing to engage and always thinking of new ideas. I mean, over the years, and it's just these small ideas, but to help improve the community. I'm not, uh, if you're aware, she came up with the idea of hanging the flower baskets on the light posts on Hotel Street. She worked with DTS, and she actually goes and waters them herself. Um, so she, it's a really great organization, and it's really made some positive changes in the community. Yeah. So to talk about this uh, this patrol program, this neighborhood patrol program that we, that the money that we gave her is going to help fund. Are you, are you familiar with that? I'm not too familiar with that, but my understanding, it is going to be similar to other uh, established neighborhood wa watches uh, working in conjunction with HPD. And I actually commend her because... Um, actually, that part of Chinatown, that arts district, that's one part, portion that really didn't have a watch. Uh, you had those guys on uh, Keikau Liki and up by Lam Sai Ho Tong. But yeah, I think so. This is going to be a really good fit for the uh, Chinatown arts district. I can actually uh, add a little bit to that. So um, Lisa, she really, really went above and beyond as a community member to bring people together. And she reached out to the District 1 uh, community policing team. And what they identified was the issue, a lot of the issue with Chinatown is the whole private public area. So what happens is, is when our homeless uh, go onto the private area, uh, the police can't tell people to move along unless there's a representative. So she's really brought people together to fill that gap so that when an officer encounters a homeless individual on private property, there's a point of contact that we can verify whether or not they're supposed to be on property or not. Uh, prior to initiatives that she's brought together, um, that wasn't an option. We just kind of had to leave them where they were. Well, folks, uh, there you have it. We've had a very engaging discussion and dialogue with these two gentlemen who are at the forefront of making Chinatown a better place. And I just want to thank you. I want to thank you as a citizen. I want to thank you as a Waikiki a Tourism Association a stakeholder in all this tourism, if you will. I want to thank you as a former mayor because Chinatown is so important. It has a rich history, and we want to make sure everybody remembers what's so great about it in the past, but in going forward, the best is yet to come. Absolutely. So thank you for being thank here you, today. Sir. Captain, appreciate best it. wishes to you. Yes. Keep it going. I'll try. <laughs> Be more. Come on, come on, man. Sean, keep up the great work. Go thank Buff you, and Blue. All right. thank and you. Iwani. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time here on Tech 101 with another edition of Tourism 101.